So now we're going to look at some experimental probability, and we're going to use rolling a dice as our example. So in this particular instance, we're going to find the experimental probability of the following set of results. Okay, and we're going to express each of our answers as both a fraction, a decimal, and a percent. So as you know, a single dice has six potential outcomes. So the result the result there represents all of the possible outcomes that you could get. Okay, so the result is your outcomes. Okay, the frequency is simply the number of trials that resulted in that outcome. Okay, so for example, in this first uh, piece over here, the number of times I rolled a one was three times. Okay, so in three of the events, I rolled a one. So as we go through, we want to figure out, well, what's the probability of rolling a 7? Okay, so in this case, when you have P and then in brackets something else, that represents, well, what's the probability of that happening? Okay, so what we want to do is we want to figure out, well, what's the total number of uh, trials that was done? So let's add this together, okay? So if we add this together, we get 3 plus 4 plus 3 plus 5 plus 2 plus 1 means that there were 18 trials in total. Okay, So we want to figure out the probability of rolling a 7. Well, how many trials resulted in us rolling a 7? Well, if we look at the results, the results could be either 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. So how many of those rolls, of those 18 rolls, got us a 7? Zero. Okay, none of the rolls got us a seven. So our probability of rolling a seven is actually zero over eighteen. Okay. Well, zero over eighteen uh, is already in lowest terms. Okay. I mean, you could write it as zero over one. I suppose you could divide both of those by eighteen. Okay. And if we want to figure out what that is as a decimal, zero divided by one. 0 divided by 1 is equal to 0. So 0, 0.0 uh, is our decimal. And if I want to figure out what 0, 0.0 is as a percentage, I would multiply 0, 0.0 by 100, and I would end up with 0%. Okay, so the probability of rolling a 7 is 0. Okay, it cannot happen. Okay. But let's keep looking down the line. Okay, so again, our frequency, if we add it up, we end up with... 18. Okay, so what's our probability of rolling a 6? Well, we got a 6 one time. Okay, uh, and so our probability of rolling a 6 is 1. Okay? We, we had one successful trial that resulted in us getting a 6. So that means that 1 out of 18 got us a 6. If we want to convert that into a decimal, we take 1 divided by 18. And that gives us 0 0.05 repeating. Okay. Uh, if we want to convert that into a percentage, we got a multiple. So again, you take the top number divided by the bottom number. So that's 1 divided by 18. 1 divided by 18 gives us 0 0.05 repeating. And then if we take that number, we multiply that by 100, that's going to give us our 5.5 repeating percent. Okay. If we look at the next example here, probability of not rolling a 6. Okay, well again, the total number of rolls is 18. Probability of not rolling a 6 means that we rolled either a 5, a 4, a 3, a 2, or a 1. Okay, so of not, the probability of not rolling a 6 is all of these combined. Okay, and so when we add all of those together, we're going to get 17. Okay, so you could do this directly by adding 3 plus 4 plus 3 plus 5 plus 2 gives you 17. Or you could do it by indirectly, by subtraction. So I know that I didn't, 
Uh, the probability of not rolling a six means that all of the sixes are eliminated. So uh, out of all of the 18 trials, one of them was a six. So 18 minus one gives us 17. Okay, so 17 out of 18 trials is going to result in getting not a six. Okay, so again, as a percentage, 17 divided by 18 is 0 0.5. Nine, four. Okay, we'll average that out. Okay, uh, and then as a percentage, that actually becomes ninety-four percent. Okay. So let's look to question number four. It says, "What's the probability of rolling an even number?" Well, we know that even numbers are two. Four and six. Okay, so out of all those totals where we had 18 rolls in total, how many of those resulted in us getting an even number? Well, if I take the frequency of four, five, and one and I add those together, that means that I get 10. Okay, so in 10 instances, I ended up with a number that was even. So 10 out of 18 rolls ended up being even. I want this as a fraction in lowest terms. Both of these are even numbers, so I can divide them by 2 evenly. So 10 divided by 2 is 5, and 18 divided by 2 is 9. And then that's a fraction in lowest terms. So if I want to put that into a decimal, I take 5 divided by 9. And that's going to equal 0 0.55 repeating. If I want to convert that into a percentage, then that leaves me with 55.5 repeating percent. Okay. So if we want to just look at rolling an even number, then we've we only result uh, take a look at the trials that ended up, or we only add together the trials that ended up in even numbers. Okay. So next we can take a look at uh, the situation where we have or and and. Okay, and this is this is key. Okay, so what's our probability of rolling an even number or a number that's greater than three? Okay, so there's when you have something that's or, that means there's two conditions that could be met. Okay, they don't have to be met at the same time. Either one of those two conditions can be met. I know again that I have a total of 18 total trials. So let's first take a look at numbers that are even. Okay. So numbers that are even, or results that are e from an even number, it's right there. Okay, we did that one already. Okay, uh, and so total number of results that are even, we look at our frequency and we've got four plus five plus one. So that gives us 10 in total. So there are 10 even numbers that were rolled, okay, or a number that's greater than three, okay, and here it's important that we don't double count. Greater than three does not mean equal to three. So the only numbers that we haven't already counted is this result here. Trials that resulted in a five also ended up as part of this equation, okay, and so two times we got a five, and a five is a number that is greater than three, okay, and we're not going to double count uh, the number of trials that resulted in us getting a four or a six, okay. So in total, we actually have 12 out of 18 trials result in us getting a number that is either an even number or a number that is greater than three. So again, we got to convert this into a fraction in lowest terms. 12 and 18, we can divide both of those by 3. So 12 divided by 3 is 4. And 18 divided by 3 is 6. Okay, And 6 and 4 are both even numbers, so we can divide them again. So we get 2 out of 3, or rather 2 over 3. Okay, 2 over 3, if we take 2 divided by 3, we end up with 0 decimal 6, 6 
repeating. And that is also equal to 66%. Okay. Now, situation number six here says, what's the probability of rolling uh, an even number and a number that is greater than three? Okay. So in this case, there's two things that need to be sat two conditions that need to be satisfied at the same time. So first off, let's look at all of the even conditions. Okay, we know in total that we've got 18 total uh, total trials. Okay, so let's look at all of our even numbers. Okay, so we've done this before. So we know that we got four rolls of two. We rolled a four five times, and we rolled a six one time. Okay, so all of those are potentially in the running to be considered. Okay, so all of those are even numbers. However, I better do this, greater than three. The next thing that we want to look at is they have to be and greater than three. Okay, if they have to be greater than three at the same time, you're only looking at the even numbers that are bigger than three. Okay, and in that case, only the four and the six results count, okay? Because they have to satisfy both conditions at the same time. This condition does not count, okay? Because the result for two, even though I rolled a two four times, two is not greater than three. So it doesn't meet both conditions that I'm looking for. So in this case, my total is actually five plus one, okay? So five plus one is six. So six out of the 18 rolls, uh, six out of the 18 trials resulted in a roll that was both an even number and a number that was greater than three. Okay, so again, we need to convert this fraction into lowest terms. So both of these six and 18 can both be divided evenly by six. So you end up with one over three. One over three, if I take one divided by three, that is equal to 0 decimal 3, 3 repeating. And I can convert that into a fraction of, or sorry, into a percentage of 36%. Okay. So here, really, the big key is that there is a difference between or as well as and. Or and and are two different things. Okay. And so we need to be aware that when we're accounting for probability.